Now, let us introduce the concept of conditional probability as it appears here, we are measuring probability of some event based upon a particular condition. So, let us introduce this through an example. Let us think of a random experiment wherein a coin is tossed three times. three times. Let A be the event that the outcome had the outcomes have then two heads. B is the event that the outcomes have no head. Now, if I look at the sample space, the sample space looks like this, outcomes are the coin is tossed three on three different occasions. We can have all three heads, two heads, one tail. We will have three such possibilities H T H and T H H. Okay. And we can have two tails and one head in various combinations. Head here on the second toss, head on the first toss, tail on the other two tosses, and tails all everywhere, tail in all the three tosses. The this is first toss, second toss, outcome of this first, second, third tosses that we see here. Now, observe that these four sample points correspond to the event B. B is, uh, let us call this a sample point E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, E6, E7, E8. Now, E 5, E 6, E 7, E 8 correspond to B. No, sorry, correspond to A. A, what is A? Even that the outcomes have fewer than two heads, that is one or more, one or no head at all. So, this have exactly one head, these three outcomes E 5, E 6, E 7 and E 8 had no head at all, meaning they have all, they are all the cases corresponding to fewer than two heads. So, E 5, E 6, E 7, E 8. Okay. Now, suppose we are interested in probability of B. What is the probability of B? Even that the outcome has no heads. So, then you would have said it is this E 8 is the only possibility, no heads at all. So, 1 out of 8, so 1 by 8. But on the other hand, suppose we are interested in the chance of occurrence of B, that is even that there are no heads, but you are also told that there are fewer than 2 heads. So, given that A has happened, given A, how do you write it? we denote it this way, we are interested in the probability of B given A. So, what happens is, when you are said that it is given A, the sample space will be reduced to the outcomes favorable to A. So, it is N of A that is going to be written in the denominator. 
Now, within A, how many k's are favorable to B? So, within A, these are all the cases favorable to A. B happens to be just E8. So, within A, what are the cases favorable to B? So, that is N of B intersection A divided by N of A. So, I can even write this as N of B intersection A divided by N of S. Both numerator and denominator can be divided by N of S. So, N of A by N of S. So, what do we have here? It is probability of A intersection B divided by P of A. So, conditional probability that is we will put it in a Venn diagram like this here. I am interested in this is S A B. We are interested in the probability of B given A. So, when you are saying B given A, the entire sample space, previous sample space is gone. So, you have to look at only the points favorable to A. Within that, how many points are favorable to B? These are the points favorable to B. That is, this is N of B intersection A. Out of what? N of A. So, N of B intersection A divided by N of A. So, this is what you have here. Okay. We observe that it is P of B in given A come is coming out to be P of A intersection B divided by P of A provided P of A is positive. It is not an impossible event. So, now we could have reversed the roles of A and B. What is it you can say? What is P of A given B? Now, the sample space will be reduced to B. So, it would have been N of B in the denominator and the points favorable to A within B. So, N of A intersection B. So, that would have been N of A intersection B, I mean divided by N of S divided by N of B by N of S. So, that is P of A intersection B by P of B now. So, what you observe this is of course, when P of B is positive, when P of B is positive, when P of B is positive. So, now this allows us to write like this probability of A intersection B, let us cross multiply is equal to probability of A given B, A given B into P of B, into P of B provided if P of B is positive, that is B is not an impossible event. You can also write from here probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A into probability of B given A into probability of A provided P of A is positive. And this is this what is called the multiplication theorem of probability multiplication theorem of probability. So, what is multiplication theorem of probability? Probability of simultaneous occurrence of two events can be written as probability conditional probability of the event into probability of the event. Now, let us look at the extended form of the multiplication of theorem of probability that is we have proved it for two events. Now, let us extend it for more than two events that is n events let us say probability of Simultaneous occurrence of n events is probability of E1 into probability of E2 given E1 into probability of E3 given E1 and E2, so on so forth. Probability of E n given E 1 intersection E 2 so on intersection E n minus 1. This is extension of probability multiplication theorem of probability for n events that is probability of occurrence of one the 
n events one after the other. Simultaneous events means all the n events can should occur. So, what is the chance of E1 and E2 and E3 and En occurring is first probability of E1 occurring. Given that E1 has occurred, what is the chance of E2 occurring? Into probability of E3 occurring, given that E1 and E2 have both occurred, so on so forth. Probability of En, given that E1, E2, En minus 1 are all have all occurred. 